Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to this Connect, connecting you with the art of data visualization and storytelling. My name is Sagar Kapoor and I'm part of customer success team at Taplo. So this Connect started as a small pilot project with one of the Tableau ambassadors in India. And the only intention was to how we can go ahead and connect everyone with the power of data visualization and storytelling. So far, we have done close to 39 sessions, 44 speakers, 6,000 attendees, 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. And we have a community group on LinkedIn in which you can talk to and connect with each other. And this has been possible with the help of our amazing data family members. Thank you everyone who has come and shared their experience on this connect. So go ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called West Connect. So all the sessions which are presented on West Connect, they are uploaded to our YouTube page and great resources. Just go ahead and subscribe to it. Join our LinkedIn group. Some great content. Go ahead, connect with the community and start learning with each other. So today I'm excited to welcome back one of the Tableau Zen master, Jeffrey Schaefer. So Jeffrey is a chief operating officer and vice president of information technology and analytics at Unifern. He's also an urgent professor at the University of Cincinnati. He's the author of Big Book of, he's one of the co-author of Big Book of Dashboards, and he's a regular speaker on the topic of data visualization, Tableau trainings at conferences, symposium, workshop, universities, and corporate trading programs. With that, Jeffrey, over to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Just going to share my screen real quick. And uh, there we go. So thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Jeff Schaefer. Uh, as you just heard, I am the Chief Operating Officer and, and Vice President at a company in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, called Unifun. We work in the financial services uh, industry and, and been doing that for over 20 years at, at this point. I'm also adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati where I teach data visualization. And as part of that course, we also work in, in Tableau and been doing that for about eight, nine years uh, now. Uh, and so I've uh, been doing that. And uh, fortunate enough uh, to be a, a five-time Tableau Zen master uh, if, if you're not familiar with that, I, I guess it, it means I'm supposed to know a little bit about Tableau, um, which hopefully I can share with you today, um, some, some tips and, and tricks and charts and things. And uh, as mentioned, co-author with uh, Andy Cotgreave and Steve Wexler on the Big Book of Dashboards. Uh, we also host a regular podcast webcast if you will um, we do it over the web so so we can share screens and look at visuals um, webcast that is uh, called chart chat uh, so you can see that from big book of dashboards uh, .com. Uh, so my session today is going to be uh, tips and and charts and uh, so what I thought I would do is just uh, on, on every slide, including my title slide, uh, show you some tips and tricks and, and things along the way. Um, my first one I think that I use all the time with uh, dashboards is, is, is floating images. Um, for example, I'll use a floating text box. And uh, if I bring a floating text box up and just put a blank space in that text box, uh, I can get this, this box uh, here that I'll, that I'll move around the screen. Under the layout pane, I can change the background color of that. For example, I can make it white. Um, and what I can do with that is I can make that long and thin, and that's a great way to add um, whether you want to put a line on your dashboard, a little border line or something like that. A uh, great way to do that, I guess, in uh, this day and age, um, it might be used to create a mask. So I could I could create a mask for this session. And, uh, you know, there we go. We're, we're masked for our social distancing. Um, so that's a good tip or, or trick. Um, as I mentioned, this this uh, this particular session is called Tips and Charts. Uh, it's a variation on speed tips, but I wanted to uh, um, later on uh, with Andy Kriebel, we did we did two years of speed tips at the Tableau conference, and then we did fifty charts in fifty minutes. And so I kind of mashed this together to do tips and charts uh, all all in one in one session. Um, so another good one that I use all the time is. Uh, 
when I want to have big text. And uh, I use big text like for bands, uh, big numbers, uh, annotations on your dashboard. You want to use big numbers. Uh, in this case, Tableau will only let you go, only I should say, to size 72. Uh, you can't plug in a number more than that. You can't put in uh, 80, for example. It won't let you do that. You can't put in 100. It won't let you do that. So you're, you're kind of stuck there. One thing that you can do is you can open up a Word uh, or any any text editor really, but I'll just open up a Word document. And what you can do with that text is you can just copy and paste it into Word. And when you do that, you can adjust it, whatever you want to do in here. Um, you'll see the font kind of loads up. It doesn't really matter. You can change the font back in, in Tableau. Uh, but in this case, I can adjust the font up to say, you know, 120. Uh, and now I can have really big font. I can copy that back into my text box. And when I do that, you'll see that my font now is bigger than the uh, 72. So, um, and I'll center it here real quick. But now all of a sudden I have bigger font and um, I have a way to get a, a larger font into Tableau. So for bands, that works really well. Um, and it, it will work with whatever system font you have in, installed on, on your machine. So another tip or trick for you. I have a bunch of links for you today um, just to, to help you out. My website is called dataplusscience.com. Um, I have a blog there. You can click on the blog and I blog mostly on Tableau and data visualization things. Um, so there's, there's one link for you. I have another website called tableaureferenceguide.com and uh, that has 785 curated links. I try to keep it up quarterly with all the new blog posts. Um, it's searchable. So if you want to know how to make a lollipop chart, you can type in the word lollipop and it'll give you all the blog posts that people have written about lollipop charts. Um, so good resource for you. It's also categorized by graphing and color and calculations and, and so on. So, um, and then I even started a tip session with all the tips that, that people have. Um, started a blog session. Um, so if you want to see all the great blogs that are out there, I've got a whole list of, of Tableau blogs I try to keep up on. Um, and then new set actions and parameter actions. I started building that out and uh, more to come with Tableau prep. Um, just started building that out. So another resource for you. The last two I'll show you are tab tips and um, tab charts. Tab tips is just an uh, aggregation of uh, volumes of tips that I do, 10 tips, and uh, I have 15 volumes at this point. I also do a daily tip on Twitter, so um, you can check my Twitter feed out and get, get daily tips. And uh, Tab Charts is, is, well, it's not new. I launched it after doing speed charts at the conference, um, but I've built it out a lot more. So um, you'll see bar chart, stack bar chart, all these different charts, and it gives you sort of a roadmap if you want to learn how to, for example, um, build you know one of these charts, uh, a bullet graph. Uh, you click on it. It gives you sort of the layout of what your Tableau canvas looks like with the pills, and it gives you a data set, and it gives you instructions on how to do it. Um, so just another resource for you uh, there. Now, that's all good. One of the things that frustrates me is I, I can't link to that in here. I could I could put a, a image, I could insert an image in Tableau. And if I insert an image into Tableau, when I do that, it lets me have a target UIL. I can put a target UIL uh, on, on there. But uh, when I have text, I can't do that. So let's show you how we can do that with Word. That's pretty cool. You can just go dataplusscience.com. Um, in fact, you could just go to a website. So let me let me do it that way, actually, and, and show you that. I'll go to dataplusscience.com, and I'll just copy the URL from the browser, and I will just paste it over here into Word. And when you do that, it, it, the URL comes with it, right? The hyperlink is built into the text. Well, if you take that text and you bring it over into Tableau, that text will copy with the URL and it's actually clickable. So my Tableau reference guide isn't clickable, but now this text um, now has a hyperlink built into it. When I click on it, it takes me to the website and I can go there. So um, it's unfortunate, you know, that we can't just add a direct URL in here, you know, in the text box, you know, you can't, 
insert them from over here, uh, but you can copy and paste things from Word. So another another tip for you, I guess I'd have to select all and center it again, but um, now I have a link to a website. So another little tip or trick for you. All right, the next thing I wanna build out is a set of charts. And the first one I wanna, uh, the first one will, will probably take a little bit, but then I'm gonna show you how we can build four or five charts really quickly from, from one chart. Um, the chart I'm going to build out is, is, is a connected dot plot. Um, I use this all the time. I think this is a great chart. Some refer to it as a dumbbell chart. Some refer to it as a barbell chart. Um, some a, a gap chart. People call these by different names. Um, but really what it is, it's a dot plot that's connected with a line. And if you've used Tableau for any amount of time, you, you know, you know, a common trick that we use to uh, uh, build this is that you can uh, do a dual access, right? You can, you can dual access to get this chart. So I'm gonna build this really quickly um, and show you those steps. And once I have it done, I'm gonna show you a bunch of variations that we can do with this uh, connected dot plot. So um, in this case, I'm just using the Superstore data uh, and and I and I think you probably all know Superstore well enough. I'm just using subcategory. I could use anything, category or state or whatever. And I'm just using sales. Um, so just just common fields. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just take subcategory. I'm going to put that on my rows. And so there I have my rows. I'm going to take my sales uh, down here and put that on my columns. Um, that's going to give me a bar chart. I'm going to kick that into entire view. So just up here in the in the in the view, I'm just going to move it into entire view. And then I'm going to force the mark type, uh, which is important when you're working with dual access, because if you don't force it, the, the automatic will, you know, sort of mess with things here. Um, but I'm going to force it into a circle. So now I have my dot plot. Now I want to break this dot. I want to burst a dot into multiple dots. To do that, you can put something on your details, you put something on your color. Uh, one bar will burst into multiple bars, one dot will burst into multiple dots, one line, and so on. So in this case, I want a dot for the years of order date. So I'm going to take my order date, and I'm just going to put it on details for now, just so I, you can see. And I have a dot for each year now. So one of them is 2016, one of them 17, one of them is 18, one of them is 19. Now I want to filter that by the same thing. I want to filter out for just two years. So I'm going to put order date on filter and I'm going to click years and I'm just going to pick the last two. Let's just take 18 and 19 just to see, um, or I could do 16 and 19, whatever, just two years. I'll just do 18 and 19. So I click that and now I have two dots. I want to show one dot going from 16 or 18, excuse me, to 19 over here. Um, now, if I want to color them, I could move that pill to color. I could just drag it up here to color. Another little tip or trick, there's a little icon next to the pill. You could click on that pill, change the color. Um, easy, fast way to do, do a color. All right, now to get the line, this is where I use the dual access. The fastest way that I always use to do a dual access when I want to copy a pill, I want to, I want sales to be on on the on the dual access. So I'm just going to hold my control key down, and when I hold my control key down, I'm just going to leapfrog sales right next to itself. I'm just going to drag it right next to itself, and when I do that, I get the dual. I get two axes, two axes at this point. I want to create a dual access from this. Now I told you the marks card, right? It says circle on all. My first one says circle. My second one says circle. If this were automatic, they'd both, you know, they'd look like this. Um, and that, that could be problematic. If I change the first one to circle uh, here, and then I'd have the second one. So I always try to force the mark types to what I'm trying to do, especially when I'm working with a dual axis, because it will, it'll change up the marks on you. Um, now, in this case, I now click on the second pill, go down here, just click dual access, and, and I have that. Um, so there you go. That's, that's, that's where we're there. We got dots on top of a dot. When you're doing a dual access, one important thing is to always synchronize. So you want to right click on your secondary access uh, and click synchronize. There we go. They're, they're synchronized. Now, one needs to be a dot, the other needs to be a, uh, a line. So we're going to go to that second marks card. We're just going to now force that to be a line. 
it's starting to appear what we want, but the lines aren't connected in the way that we want to connect them. And so we get path, right? Path shows up on our marks card. I only have a couple choices if we think about it. I could put subcategory on there and 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 that that's not going to work because that's going to give me the view that I have. So subcategory on, on path isn't going to do any good. So what I really need is the year of that order date on path to connect those two dots together. So I'm going to bring order date on path, but I want you to watch what happens. Pay attention. Order date is using year on the marks already. And so when I bring order date over to path, it's going to go down to the next aggregation of date, which is quarter. And if I brought order date again to details, it would go to month. And if I bring order date again over to details, it goes down to day. So it, it whatever you add in here is going to keep going down. Well, because of that, I need to take that quarter and I need to adjust it. I need to flip it up to year. So I can I could right click on it and and choose that or i could hit the little drop down box just change it to year and now it's connected in the way that you want the last piece i would do is just get year off of color and i could drag year off of color now once you do that you might think to yourself well now if you go back and i hit the back button and go all the way back to when i had year on color all i really needed to do is just click on that icon of color and change it to path and we would have been good to go, right? Easy enough. All right. I forgot to plug in my handy dandy Logitech spotlight here. So bear with me one second. And I feel like I should be sponsored by Logitech at this point because I use this, this spotlight remote so much. But um, what I want to point out to you is the bars the the lines that are on our connected dot plot are on top of the dots that's called z order right we have our x axis which is sales we have our y axis which is subcategory so your columns are your x your rows are your y but now you're dealing with the z axis and so you have these marks that are in front of other marks well there's a couple different things you can do. What you'll notice over here on your marks card is that the, the mark on top that shows on top is actually the, the shelf, the mark shelf that's on the bottom. The easiest way to change it is to just leapfrog your pills. Just take your first sales pill and leapfrog it over your second sales pill. That will change your Z order. And now your dots are on top of your lines. So easy enough, no problem. And you'll see on your marks card, the line moved up to the top and the circle moved down to the bottom. Now there is another way you could right click on your secondary access and you could click on move marks to the back. I don't typically do that because it doesn't it then then your marks over here change up. If I if I flip this back, now you'll see circle at the bottom of your marks card and line on top. So I don't usually do that because then I then I then it's not my default tableau. It messes with my marks card. So I like to do this so that I know the bottom of my marks card is the top of my marks. I can quickly look over here, which is what tableau does by default. Uh, circle is on top and line is on the bottom. So it just kind of builds up as you as you add marks. All right. Easy enough. I probably hide the top access because I don't need it. Right click, uncheck show header, and I have a connected dot plot, which is pretty close. I had changed the color. I guess I was using 16 and 19. Um, so if I go up here and change my year to 16 and 19, you'll see the colors will assign like I have to the other chart, and we've built the connected dot plot. All right. What can we do with this? Well, now we're going to, that, that took some time. But now I want to show you how quickly from just building that one chart, how we can make three or four more different style charts from this one connected dot plot and we can do it pretty quickly. For example, there's a chart called the tadpole chart where you don't have the dot on one side, you just have the dot on the other side. So I could take my connected dot plot and instead of starting with a tadpole chart over here, I'm going to I'm going to delete this sheet. And I'm going to take my connected dot plot down here. I'm going to right click and duplicate it. So now I have the, the second connected dot plot and I'm going to build a tablet, a tadpole chart from this. So to build this tadpole chart, what I just need to do is add this 
something to size to tell it to size this dot really small, that dot really big, and guess what? That's year of order date. So really, all I'd have to do is go to my marks card over here, add order date to size. Remember when I do this, right? It's going to go to year. It's going to it's it's going to it's going to jump down to quarter. Um, so here's another trick for you. You can use right click, take your mouse and right click and drop. And when you right click and drop, it asks you what you want to do. Instead of automatically going to quarters, it's going to ask you, what do you want to drop? So if you use the right click when you drop the pill, then you can click on year and we just put year on size. When I put year on size, I actually already have a tadpole because it's remembering um, the way that the size is, but no problem. I go in here and I just size 16 to really, really small. 19 to really really big or whatever size i want if i want it bigger i can make it bigger and there we are we have a tadpole chart so really with one extra step we take a dot plot connected dot plot and we can convert it into what we call a tadpole chart all right so i'll rename that i'm just going to call that tadpole now when i go to write tadpole down here at the bottom you're going to see i have a sheet called tadpole Tableau is not going to let me have two sheets called the same name, so it's going to give me an error. What do we do? Well, I just add a space at the end of it, and now I have two sheets called Tadpole. I know, probably not best practice if you're trying to, you know, look at your sheets, but if you ever really need to change the name of something and do something like this, uh, then you could, you could have that trick. All right, next thing you want to do is maybe you want to just do a variation where you want to have an open circle on your Tadpole. Now, this is a little trickier but i'll give you i'll show you how we're doing it instead of doing a regular dual access we're going to use our measure values on that second access and what i need to do is copy sales so the trick here is that i take sales i make a copy of it and i use both of them together on that one axis that is the circles and you'll see i changed it it's actually shapes um but that, that's how we're going to get this. So let's just go back to our tadpole chart over here. I'm going to duplicate our tadpole chart. So we're already there. And now instead of this sum of sales up here on my second axis, and I'm, I'm going to actually just show this, this header so that we can see it here. We have the sum of sales up here. Um, I want to copy it. So I'm going to go down to sales. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say uh, duplicate and I'm going to get a second sales. So that's what I have, right? Sales copy. Um, now I want to use sales copy on here. So what I'm going to do, and, and this is this is kind of tricky. If I bring sales up to my secondary uh, X access, right? It'll add it. That's a little trick for you there. It'll add it in there on the measure values. So I mean, the other thing I guess I could have done is I could go to measure values. I could add measure values and on top of sales, but I'm going to get all of these measure values. Like over here, I'm going to get migrated data and I'm going to get all these, all these things, right? And I don't, I don't want to have all these pills on here. So to, to do this, what I'm just going to take the sales copy, I'm going to add it to the secondary y, X axis at the top. Just drop it right up there. You get this little, like little ruler sign. And when you do that, Let's do that again without the zoom. Then it changes your pill up here to measure values. And you'll see I have sales and sales copy. Now that's exactly what I want, except it put measure names, it added measure names to my rows. Now you already kind of know I want to use the measure names as the delineator for the shapes. Like over here, if you go to my shapes, what I'm doing is I'm using measure names for color and size. That's the trick, right? So I'm gonna change the color of that and I'm gonna change the size based on whether it's the sales or the sales copy. So easy enough. Let's just go to this. We're gonna change this to uh, <clears throat> shape. We're going to put measure names on the size easy enough. And we're also going to put measure names on color. So find measure names and put measure names on color. Now, <clears throat> that gets us close. We did not sync. 
So I need to go up here after I change my axis. You'll see these dots are not lined up. That's why I told you we always need to synchronize our, our axis on a dual axis. When I changed it to measure values, it needs to be resynchronized. So I'm going to resynchronize that. All right. <clears throat> the next thing I need to do over here is well, you'll kind of see that we got this this little dot in here and, and we got this other stuff going on. The trick, what I'm doing here is I'm using, I'm, I'm kind of doing two things. I'm, I'm, I'm using a, a circle, two circles, and let me change the size of this and then I think you'll see the trick. If I change the size um, here, I'll make that really big. And then in here, I'm gonna change sales and sales copy. So sales copy, I'm gonna make it bigger and you'll see it's a white circle and I'm controlling the size of the white circle on top of a blue circle. That's all I'm doing. And so as I, I have sales copy as the small circle, that's a white circle. So sales copy is white and I have a white circle on top of a blue circle. And when I size the white circle correctly, I get an open circle. Because if I don't do that, then I'm gonna get a line on top of another line. Like if I go back here and just change this circle to shape, you'd think, well, Jeff, why don't you just do that? That's, that's the, well, that's the problem is your line goes through the middle of the circle, um, which I mean, maybe you want for some design, but um, for other designs, maybe you don't. So that's, that's really the trick here um, is that you're just, you're just doing that now. Um, I put measure name on, on shape. I think I wanted it on size and color, but anyway, that's that. Um, so we put year on that. How am I doing on time? I don't want to run out of time here. I want to show some more charts. Uh, let's build a comet chart out of this. And it's really, this is actually really, really easy. It's, this is as easy as making a tadpole chart. Um, we're just going to take the original. I'm going to go all the way back to the original connected dot plot. I'm going to duplicate it and I'll bring that down over here. I'll get rid of our comet chart here. I'll just delete that. And so now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> you'll kind of see from here, I'm using that year. It's the year was on path. Well, I also added year to size. So not only is the, it's the line, right? It's the line that's telling us, but I don't, I don't need the dual axis anymore because I don't need the dots. So what I, what I can do is get rid of the dots. So I just have a line and I just need to tell Tableau to size that line based on that year. So you already have your comment chart. You just want the one side of the comment chart, the newer year you want to be thick, the thinner year you want to be thin. So to do that, I just need to put a uh, year on size. Well, remember, if I bring order date over to size, what do I get? I'm going to get quarter. So what am I going to do instead? I'll right click order date when I drop it to size. Just right click, drop it, choose year. And now I have a comment chart. It's really that easy. And it's actually easier than a connected dot plot because you don't have to duplicate your sales to get the dual access. Your size, you can control. So if you want the one end, you know, bigger or smaller, that's how you do that. Um, Steve Wexler has a great blog post on the comment chart. And I think this is a great way. People tend to love this. It's, a, it's sort of a, a unique view that, that people don't see. And um, from what I've seen, people really get this quickly. So if you wanna show movement between, you know, say two years, um, I think this is an interesting way to do that. Um, it's also interesting that just by using the line mark, Tableau by default, when you use a line, it rounds the, the edges. So that, that's why it looks like this and you don't have to put a dot on it. I mean, if you wanted to, you could, you could duplicate the sales and, and add a dot. All right, the next question, when I do this in, in trainings, um, data, you know, workshops, Tableau trainings, um, I get this question a lot. People say, well, how do you, how do you color this? I want to show, you know, one side, if it's going to the right, uh, like copiers is moving from low to high, I want to color it in blue, uh, but machines are moving from high to low. I want to color that in red. And you say to yourself, okay, well, that no problem, that's sales. So let's just put uh, sales on color. And so you do that and you don't get what you're looking for. You're like, oh, well, wait a minute. That's light color on one side going to dark. 
and it's going from a low number to a high number. So, okay, well then what do I do? Well, then you might say, well, I need to do a table calc. You might go down and say, I'm gonna do a quick calculation and say, what about percent of difference? And I just show the difference um, if it's a percent positive or negative. So I'm gonna click that and I'll get a positive percent and a negative percent. Well, that kind of does what you want to do. You have dark blue, you have uh, light blue, um, but if you look at it, it's not right, right? I mean, this is blue going to the right, this is blue going to the left. That has to do with your table calculation, right? You just did a percent of difference. Well, the way this is coloring, you understand your table calculations, it's going down your table. So this one is higher than this one, this one's higher than this one, then it you know, these are going down, then this one's going up. Well, this one is higher than its previous, so it's blue. This one's lower than its previous, so it's orange. So then you say, oh, Jeff, that's easy. You just go to your table calculation and say compute using, and you change that to order date, and you're going to get what you want. Well, kind of. I get this light orange color going to dark blue. Yes, if it's a big difference, it's dark blue. If it's a little difference, it's light blue. Um, but that's not really what I want. What I actually want is this. So how do I get that? Well, that is a little tricky. That is gonna require some sort of um, calculation to do. And so I'm gonna show you a, a couple different ways that you can do this. I'll show you what I did. And then I'll show you a trick that uh, Ken, Ken Flairlich actually came up with. So here's my calculation for this. Um, and it, it may look daunting at first, but don't, don't get too excited about it. Um, so my calculation um, is that I'm going to look at, well, first I'm gonna check it, it is the value null because you have a problem of the first point over the previous year is not, not gonna have a value. So that's gonna be null. So it's gonna check. Um, and what I'm going to do is not allow those nulls. And I'm going to say sales of this period minus the sales of the last period. And I'm going to divide that by the absolute value of looking up last period sales. So I'm going to take this minus this divided by the original, right? Easy enough. You may not be able to write that calculation. So here's another great, I mean, maybe not off the top of your head, you'd say to yourself, I, I wouldn't be able to figure that out. Well, don't, don't worry about that. You can go over here, create a calculated field. Um, or I should go to my, uh, where is my year sum of sales? Here's my year over year calculation right here. I'm going to create a calculated field. I do this all the time. I drag that year, that table calc that I just created, drag it in the window. And now look, hey, there's the calculation that I just walked you through. Now I just had to modify that calculation and it filled it in for me. It's telling me this period minus last period divided by last period, right? So I can start with that calculation. So that, that kind of gets me to where, where I wanna go. All right, so I have my calculation. I'm gonna bring my calculation up to color. All right, we're there. Now I need to make sure my calculation is using the right thing, right? Compute using, I need to make sure it's using order date. So it's using the order date. You'll see I'm getting blue up, orange down, but it's still light and dark. I have light blue and dark blue. The next trick I'm gonna do is double click on the color legend over here, and I'm gonna step this to two colors. And by stepping it to two colors, I'm gonna get a negative, I'm gonna get a positive, right? Click apply, and now I have a two color, one positive, one negative. If it's a positive percent, it's gonna be blue. If it's a negative percent, it's gonna be red. So I kind of tricked the continuous color legend just by stepping it and forcing it into those two colors, and that lets me get this. So a single calculation and stepping our color legend into two colors, really um, a good solution for that. However, I think our friend Ken Flairledge, um, fellow Tableau Zen master and, and uh, half of the, the Flairledge twins, I guess, um, he came up with a, a cool solution and I, I really like his solution. Um, what he did is he checks the sign. And so this is a really simpler equation. What it's gonna do is gonna get the max of the sales, right? The window max of the sales minus the previous value. And it's just gonna check the sign. If this, I don't know if you've used the sign function, but if it's positive um, or negative, right? And so positive is a one, negative is a negative one. And so he gets this, um, 
the simple thing that you can make discrete. I can take Ken's solution, put it on color, and I can make it discrete. Then I have two colors, right? I also have to tell it to use year. And I have two colors, one for positive, one for negative. So great solution there. Um, easier calculation. I did a little variation on that because um, I liked his calculation. I just uh, did it that way and uh, didn't even need to use the sign. So you can do it. You can actually do it without the sign because it's just taking the sales minus last sales. Uh, and that's it. Right. It just gives you the, the same value. So um, there's an alternate uh, solution there for you. So that, unfortunately, you know, you have to do that extra step to get this distinct color. Otherwise, you'll get sort of this gradient color when you put sales on color and change it to a, a calculation percent difference and set the color to compute using the order date. And, you know, it's just it doesn't look as clean. Um, it's 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 light and it's it's hard. I think this is just a better view of the uh, the connected dot plot, um, turning it into a comet and uh, I'm having good luck with this. So I, I check out Steve Wexler's post on this. That's uh, datarevelations.com. Great post on this. Uh, check it out. And um, yeah, here, let's do another little, you, I'm sure everybody knows this one, but I don't take anything for granted anymore. I'm going to go to Steve Wexler's website, datarevelations.com. Great website. If you don't follow Steve, um, check him out sign up for his blog um, he's got it by the way he just redid his blog so really cool he's got his workshops listed up here and and so on um, his blogs under his resource page and i'm going to go here and type comment so here's his blog post about comment and um, he's had really good luck with this as well you know instead of uh showing the um, connected dot plot you know converting it into previous period to current period and i love the way he labels this by the way all right, I'm going to take his website URL. I'm going to go into my workbook. We're going to go up to worksheet and we're going to go down and show captions. Um, great way down here, double click on your captions and you can put, you know, sources down here in your data for people in your workbook, things like that. Um, so now we have that. Uh, by the way, you can you can format this sort of the same way you can format any text text box. And if you bring it down all the way to one line, I like to do that. It almost looks like, you know, source. So there you go. And you can edit it. You can reset it. You can hide it and you can format them. So you can even put a border around it. You can put shading around it. So if you're not not familiar with that, um, really kind of cool. I would definitely check check out and, and use that. So there we go. We formatted our caption and we have it down there. I'll save this workbook out for anybody. Um, if anybody wants to have it at the end and you'll have um, have this as a reference. All right, how are we doing on time? I'm at 40 minutes. I'm gonna jump to a uh, map. I wanna show you a custom map. Really kind of cool. I use this all the time in Tableau. This is not a map box map. That is a map built using Tableau built in maps. And when I show that to people, people are like, no, how do you do that? How do you get these colors? How do you change all these things? Um, don't you have to use Mapbox to do that? And the answer is no, you actually have some, some options in Tableau to be able to do this. So let's build a quick uh, map. Um, I have no idea what I just used city from Superstore, I guess. Um, so let's build a map using city from, from Superstore. I love mapping in Tableau. Anytime you bring in a geographic field with a globe, you just double click it and you get a map. That is so cool, right? I can double click city and longitude is gonna go to columns, latitude is gonna go to rows. That's the generated map in Tableau. It automatically does that. And if you're in a hierarchy, which we are for location over here, you'll see uh, city lives under state, state lives under country. Then it, if I bring in city, it brings in state and country automatically. We take this stuff for granted with Tableau but this is really important. If you have like uh, Columbus, well, there's Columbus, Ohio. There's also Columbus, Georgia. And Tableau knows that. And so it automatically fixes that for you where, where Power BI actually doesn't. And that can create a problem. Um, so anyway, we have that. I'm going to use the search box up here. I'm just going to type uh, Cincinnati just for fun and go to Cincinnati, Ohio. It's going to zoom right into my map. 
and there I have Cincinnati. Now, by default here, my map, you'll see I don't have much in, in the layers. So I'm gonna click on map up at the top and I'm gonna go to map layers. And in my map layers, I have these options over here. A lot of these are new that you didn't have before, but some of them will get grayed out. Like at the bottom, you'll see building footprints is grayed out. So what that means is your map isn't zoomed in enough. So I'm just gonna zoom in. It doesn't matter where you are on your map. You just zoom in all the way on your map. And eventually when you get zoomed in enough, buildings will show up. So building footprints will show up, neighborhoods will show up, points of interest will show up and so on. I'm gonna add streets and highways. I'm gonna remove land cover and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And all of a sudden we have this view of Cincinnati. There's Fountain Square downtown and uh, there we go. I'm gonna click it over. I could actually hold down. I don't know if you know this. You can hold down your uh, shift key. If you're in, like I'm in selection mode, right? So I can select points. But if I hold down my shift key, I can move my map. So I can move around my map and select points at the same time. So with my shift key down, I can move around. I can zoom in and out. I can go up to UC. I can hold my shift key down. Now I can zoom in. Now I can select points. So you can do things really fast when, when you do that. All right. So now this is, uh, let's see, that is UC right there. I'm gonna zoom in UC. And that, this right here is this image right here. So that that is this. So how do I change it? How do I take this map and turn it into that? Well, two tricks here. First off, you wanna right click on your, um, well, go to map layers. You can right click on your map and go to map layers or up here on map, go to map layers. You want to go to your map layers. And the first thing you want to do is you want to take off that base layer. The base layer is the coloring in the back that allows us to change the color. So if we take away the base layer, everything else will show up here uh, and we can get all the rest of our map things, but we can now change the color of that base. So that's important. All right, the second thing we want to do is right click on your map and go to format. So we've been playing around with map layers, but we want to go to format. And when you go to format, you're going to play with the shading just like you would do on a regular chart. You go to shading and the shading for the map that changes the color is the pane. It's the pane color of a chart. So you go to pane, you change that to say a blue, and now you have a blue map. So there I've just whatever color I want. If I want a yellow map, if I want a and it, you pick whatever color. If you want to go crazy and, I don't know, have a, a crazy purple map, you could do that too. So there's a purple map, and now I have my purple map. Now, the other thing you can do is go back to your map layers. This time I'll, I'll, I'll right-click on the map, go to map layers. You can change the light to, light and normal are actually the same except for the water. So nothing will change when it comes to like the buildings. But if you change it to dark, watch what happens. Now you get that view and you get dark streets. So kind of counterintuitive, your dark map layer has dark streets and dark buildings, but that, that's just the way it is for contrast. So your light map has the light sort of white and light gray and your dark map has the dark color. So great way to uh, you know customize your maps. That'll work worldwide doing that and you can create some really cool maps. Um, you know, even worldwide, just to just to do something like that. Um, so that that's a lot of fun um, changing your map. I've got maybe another few minutes here. Um, I'll just show you a variation on that new worksheet. I'll go over here and just open up World Indicator so that I'm using a world map. Uh, find my geographic field, which is countries. So there's my world map, and I'm going to basically do the exact same thing in this case. I'm going to change this, um, uh, the color of, of everything. Um, so I don't know, let's put, uh, I'll put birth rate. I'm going to right click birth rate, put it on color and change it to average. So there's your average birth rate across the, the world. Um, but I want a different watercolor. Um, so again, I go to map layers. I, I don't have many choices, right? I have white, I have normal, which changes the water to a blue color, which really doesn't work when I'm using blue for my data. I have the dark color, which is black land and, and gray water. Um, so what do I do? Well, I just simply take off my base, right click, go to format, 
and under my pain color for my shading, then I can change my pain color to whatever I want. If I want an off-white color of some sort, now I can do that. And, um, and there we go. So there you have a world map. And uh, I don't know, I'll just get rid of the dots so you can kind of see what the map looks like. But yeah, you can get a cool world map, your layers. In this case, I probably need, what, some more borders. So maybe like country borders or something that I want to add in there or coastlines, um, something like that. But I, I can get some really cool maps in Tableau without um, without even messing with a map box. So, um, so FYI, there's a blue version of it. The dots are showing up there. There's a red version of it and so on the land cover and and whatnot so all right how am i doing on time um i don't know should i do one more go for it go for it jeff yeah one more all right this is this is brand new um we have a new buffer calculation with 2020 um we can do buffer uh which which will check a distance from a point and that's a great tool, but I decided to use it to solve a common problem on maps, which is if you filter down to a single point on a map, you end up at a regional view on the map. And so here, this is these are just dots on a map. These are actually the airports in the United States. I am using a, a map box map for this. So this, this isn't the trick I just showed you. Um, so this is a map box map. I'm gonna click on Cincinnati Airport. And when I click on it, it zooms in and I see Ohio, I see Indiana, I see Illinois, I see Kentucky. I really have about nine states in this region over top of the Cincinnati airport. And maybe for my viz, because the topic is airports, maybe I want a view that looks like this, where I could see the Cincinnati airport. Like I want to click on the airport and get here. Well, I can zoom in and do it. Now my map is pinned here. Well, that's fine. But then when I unclick this point, now I can't see all my points because my map is pinned. If I unpin my map, now I'm back to all the points. Then I click here and I'm back to the regional view again. So there is no way to solve that just natively with Tableau maps. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to create a fake point. You'd have to put a fake point in your view at the distance where you wanted your airport. In other words, if I wanted to zoom in the Cincinnati airport, I'd have to have another point in this window and I'd put a fake point over here. Well, if I put a fake point over here, then my map will actually center like this with point number one over here in the bottom left and point number two up here in the top right. So then you actually need to have a couple fake points. You need a top left and a bottom right, or you need a, a boundary box around it. That was the old way of solving this. Well, no longer. We don't have to do that anymore because we have a buffer calculation. So what did I do with the buffer calculation? I created a parameter, a simple parameter. Um, let me edit that real quick and show you. It's an integer. I set the value to 10 miles, one mile, three, five, 10, 25. I can set it to whatever I want, or I could do this behind the scenes so the user doesn't have control. And then I use this new buffer calculation. The buffer calculation is pretty simple. I make a point with my latitude or longitude so that I have a geometry. So that's the point of the airport. I make the point. I put in my parameter to tell me the distance of 10, and I have to tell the buffer what units. Am I in kilometers? Am I in feet? Am I in miles? Am I in meters? And I want 10 miles. Now, instead of plotting the point, I, I do something slightly different. I have to plot the buffer, which is here, buffer on one axis with the generated longitude and latitude. Then I duplicate my generated latitude and longitude, and then I put my points of my airport on the details. That's slightly different than the other way of just putting your points on a map, but I'm using the generated longitude or latitude, and I use the buffer calculation on one, I use the points on the other, and burst those points by the ID number, and now I have points on a map with a buffer around it. Then on the buffer, this is the trick, I take the opacity of the buffer down so that I don't have any circles around it and I remove the border so the buffer is invisible. Now we have an invisible buffer. Well, what does that do for us then? Well, now I have a fake buffer at whatever range I want around my points. So when I click on Cincinnati, 
I'm now automatically a 10 mile invisible buffer around the airport and my zoom is automatically set. So if I have this set to five, it'll zoom here. If I set to here, it'll zoom here. If I go to one mile, it'll zoom all the way to here. And no matter what airport I click, now I'm at a 10 mile zoom. When I click out of that airport, oh, wrong point, click here, click out of the airport, I'm always at a 10 mile zoom. No matter what airport I click, I'm not at a regional level. And if I flip that to a three mile and I click out and I go to the Cleveland airport, I'm now in a three mile. So it's a great way to control the, the, the zoom. The only downside is, you know, you sort of have that, that fake buffer that's kind of invisible around the airport. So if you move your mouse, you know, just right, like right there, it shows up. Otherwise, you know, it, it's not there. So, um, so a little trick there until they come up with a better way for us to control the zoom. Um, now we have a, a custom zoom. I have a blog post on that, uh, on my, uh, um on my website and i have that uh workbook downloadable and and the reason i came up with that recently by the way is i just did a viz i've, I've run into this before i did a campfire viz um a couple years back but this recent viz i did which was small towns in the u.s and um i ended up zooming into a single town at a time because when i had all the towns on here i uh, would click in and i'd get this regional view and uh I could I could now solve this with the buffer calculation, so um, I could zoom in as much as I wanted. So anyway, that's a new uh, use of the the buffer calc. So with that, I guess I'll just uh, take some Q and A. Thanks a lot, Jeff. I think that was amazing. Thank you. Everyone is asking, will you share this workbook on your tablet public? I sure will. Yeah, I'll clean it up and post it. I should be able to post it uh, today. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. If anyone has any question, we have a few minutes. Just go ahead and post it to the QA tab for the comment section. No questions. Can we create a pie chart in a scatter oh, plot? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, my first question would be why? Don't do it. Um, <laughs> um, you know, the first time that came up for me was, can you build a uh, pie chart in a lollipop chart? Somebody asked, and and that one you could do with, uh, with, with drop lines. Um, with a scatter plot, I guess, uh, let's see. We want to go to, uh, I don't know, world indicators is a good scatter plot, I guess. And we'll take life expectancy of a female, drop it over here with an average and birth rate. We'll uh, drop it over here with an average. That'll give us our scatter plot. And we'll burst our dots uh, in here by country. So we'll put that on detail, I guess, and region on color. So we have a scatter plot. And then I'm going to change my mark type to a pie chart. So now my mark is a pie. And then I have to say, how am I going to split my pie? Like what portion is what? And I don't really have a good case for this, but let's just say I wanted to show life expectancy the portion by year or something so i take year and put year on slice um <clears throat> yeah that is not working here yeah region's not gonna work i don't have any dimensions in this stupid data set to slice by do i Um, I guess I'll go over here. That's what I get for trying to work this live here. New worksheet, new data source, superstore. Let's use superstore data and profit and sales, I guess. Profit, sales. Make a scatter plot with that. Whoa. 
profit and sales. Um, Subcategory, maybe category by color and then change my mark type. Will that work? And then region. So that's the error I guess you're running into, huh? I have to think about that, I guess. There, there really isn't a way to uh, create a scatter without having two measures up here. So you, you know, if I create these discreetly, um, and put this in entire view, I guess I sort of get a scatter plot, but that, I guess that's the problem you're encountering. I have to think about that, I guess. So I think uh, just the next question is that, is there any tip to minimize rendering time of map? Sometimes map takes 10 to 15 seconds to load. I'm sorry, I'm, I, I didn't catch the question. So is there any tip to minimize rendering time of maps? Sometimes map takes 10 to 15 seconds to load. Oh, uh, you know, really kind of depends on where you're pulling your maps from I, I and your internet connections, of course. Um, you know, that that is something that, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to do that at scale, um, people have done crazy stuff. Like I, I've seen, I've heard, not done it, but Mapbox has worked out solutions for people who are on the ground in Africa when they were working on the no malaria project and they have an out of box solution where they can load the maps, you know, into a into a special computer and uh, pull it locally. So there, there are ways around that, but that gets expensive, very expensive to host your own map layers. Um, so really, I mean, unless you're going to use the built in Tableau maps, um, that's that's going to be uh, that's going to be hard to do um so yeah you, you're really just stuck at that point you're really just stuck on the uh the 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 internet connection and where you're pulling them from thank you uh let's see here You know what I thought of is it'd be like building a. Uh, I was back at your pie chart question. It'd be like building a um, pie charts and and tree maps are interesting uh, things because if you uh, if you build them, you're building it without anything on your rows and columns, and that's very unusual in Tableau. So like a tree map, you know, you put uh, something on details like the country uh on details or let me do region so it doesn't do a map but i take like region and put put region on details um and i'll just change it to automatic you get you get a dot for every region right like north south east or or west um if i put country on uh details get rid of region here i got two world indicators open um there's all the countries you know so i get a box for every country and so just there's nothing on the rows or columns right it's just it's generating this box automatically um i'll put region on color you'll sort of see that and then i don't know put population on uh on population total on size you build a tree map and there's nothing on your rows and columns you're kind of doing the same thing on your your pie chart and i guess you need you know you need size and an angle um to do that and so um you might want to build your pie first i guess you know there's there's your region on detail um i should probably go back to see if i can do this as we end superstore let's do category on detail let's do sales on size change that to a pie so we get our pie chart categories to color and i don't know profit and discount maybe so let's do 
I'm using sales. So profit average and discount average. Change this to an attribute so it doesn't burst my points, I guess. And yeah, so here's the problem I think you're going to run into on this scatter plot is that whatever you put on your dimension here, you're going to burst your points and you're also bursting your angle, right? So that's that's the problem is you're bursting your points of your scatter plot with the same dimension that you're bursting your angle with. Um, so I think that's the, the problem you're going to run into. Now, you, you might be able to solve this with a dual access so that you could, uh, you know, not burst the points on one versus the other or something. That way you could, you know, take the category off here. You have one dot versus multiple dots. But I, I think that's the problem you're going to run into is you, you can't burst by two different things. So I don't know how I would solve that one. And I think I'd probably look for a different solution. I think uh, with that, thanks a lot, Jeff. I think it was great to have you on this connect. As always, I think for me personally, I always wait for you to come back on this connect. I think we learn a lot from all your tips and tricks. So thank you for coming back to this connect. It was an honor to welcome you back. Thank you. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you all. And uh, I'll post this workbook later. And uh, if any, there are any other questions, even outside of this, just uh, reach out to me, ping me on Twitter or uh, email me and um, we'll, uh, we'll chat it up. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you.